Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about tractor RPMs. What is the right level that you should be setting your tractor throttle at? Is there a one size fits all answer? I don't think so. It's more complicated than that. A lot of different scenarios. Let's get to it now. And as always, we are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. If you are feeling tippy on your tractor, side to side, adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Bora is made in America, they have a lifetime warranty. Get more information at the link down below. So the overall concept of this video is to use that throttle lever to your advantage. There are gonna be certain times you wanna have it cranked up, certain times you wanna have it lowered all the way down at idle, sometimes in between, the application will determine that. But one of the common questions that is gonna typically be asked is if if running their tractor's engine at full throttle or watt, W-O-T, wide open throttle, is going to shorten the life of their diesel engine. Now, I am not a tractor mechanic. I'm not a diesel mechanic. A lot of you guys out there know more than I do about it, so leave your comments below with what you can do to help other people. But what I found online is that that is typically not gonna be a concern. These engines are made to be ran at full throttle if you need to for a long extended period of time. And in fact, typically most diesel engines run at a lower RPM, even if they are cranked all the way out compared to a gasoline engine. There's actually quite a few folks that will say running a diesel engine at lower RPMs for a long period of time could be worse for it than running it at high RPMs. You have more carbon buildup, and that can be an issue as well, leading to more regen cycles if you are above that 26 horsepower requirement, where typically you will have fewer regen cycles. It will be longer intervals in between. If you are running at high RPMs, there's more heat that's generated, more of that soot burns off on a regular basis versus running it at a lower RPM, a lower heat level, less burn off, more regen cycles. You can see where I'm going with that. Now, every engine manufacturer could be a little bit different, so I'd always encourage you, read through your owner's manual, see what they have to say about it. Now, what I will say is it's probably more important for your startup and shutdown procedures to be on point. You'll wanna make sure you have adequate time for that whole system to get up to speed, up to heat, so to speak. So let the hydraulic fluid, the motor oil, the engine block and everything heat up. That that way, especially on those cold winter days, there's less of a chance of a shock to the system and something breaking or cracking or whatever else could happen. Same thing on the shutdown. If you look at a John Deere manual, it will recommend that you lower that throttle down, let it rest for a couple of minutes before turning it off. So there's several schools of thought out there, but the overarching theme is that these diesel engines are very robust. You're gonna have to work pretty hard to damage it, but if you can follow what it says in your manual, you're gonna be okay. Okay, so in general, adjusting that throttle control, that throttle lever is gonna have a direct impact on some of the other interfaces that you have with your tractor. So this will affect your ground speed that you can actually travel with your tractor. It will affect your hydraulic response time. It will affect the amount of hydraulic power that you have. You're gonna see an impact to your PTO output speed like on a mower deck, a rototiller, a brush hog, that kind of thing. And like we talked about earlier, it will impact your regen frequency on your DPF system. So the frequency that you have to go through that regen generation process will depend partially on the RPM level that you are normally running. Now to make this a bit more comprehensive for you as well, there's a few other considerations that could apply here and there, certain tractors, certain attachments. Number one will be an EPTO or an economy PTO. So it will still allow you to have, let's say a 540 RPM rear PTO spin rate, even though your engine is operating at a lower speed, this can save fuel overall, perhaps be easier on the engine and then the tractor as well. But that's something that not every tractor is equipped with typically the larger compacts and into the utility tractors. Now, I hope you are enjoying today's video. If you haven't done so yet, I'd encourage you, hit that subscribe button right down below. We'd love to have you follow along, get engaged, leave some comments as well. And if you are looking for something for your tractor on the front end loader, the three point hitch, pallet fork, snow pusher, grapple, box blade, land plane, rear blade, landscape rake, the list goes on. We can help you out. Check out goodworkstractors.com. A feature that I've seen on the two, three, and four series in John Deere, I'm sure some other manufacturers have that as well, is called the auto throttle function. And what this is, is it allows you to well, imagine your tractor more like a car, right? And the harder you press the gas pedal, the more the engine revs up, the faster you can go. It's a similar concept with the tractor and the auto throttle feature. If you engage that button or that knob on your tractor, set your throttle to about the mid position, all right? So I'm about halfway up. And so if you push that pedal down all the way to the ground, you're gonna get that increase in the engine RPMs, which can lead to an increase in ground speed, hydraulic response time, hydraulic power. You kind of get the idea. 
And the last thing worth mentioning, it's kind of related, kind of not, is the fact that certain attachments, rototillers are a pretty good example, they're oftentimes going to have additional gears in their gearbox where you can switch things out or rotate them around to get different ground speeds for the, uh, the rate that the tines spin to make it work with your tractor. So who knows, maybe there's a way if you wanted to really go all out and try to really fine tune your tractor and your attachment setup, you could tweak things here and there, maybe run at a lower RPM, adjust a gear setting here and there. I don't know, that's beyond my skill set, but I thought it was worth mentioning. All right, so I had to take a whole lot of notes here to keep things straight up in the old noggin. So first we wanna talk about when you should run your RPMs at a high level or full throttle, wide open throttle, WOT. And so the first example is anytime that you are gonna be using a PTO attachment. And this could be for the mid PTO, the rear PTO, even a front mounted PTO, which technically or typically runs off of the mid PTO. So snowblowers, mower decks, tillers, brush hogs, those kinds of attachments that use a gearbox to drive the blades, uh, the auger, whatever's being run off of the PTO. And you need to use this at wide open throttle or very close to it. Sometimes you will see a little PTO symbol right on your RPM gauge. Move that throttle up until the needle hits that PTO symbol, and that means it's gonna get you the required 540 RPMs at the rear PTO. Maybe it's 2,000 RPMs coming off the mid PTO. Whatever it is, that's what the attachment is designed to operate at. So if you lower your engine RPMs down, you're gonna have a lower speed on the output for the attachment as well, which means it's not gonna perform as intended, and you're not gonna get the desired results. And so oftentimes, I will use that little symbol as a guideline, right? So maybe if you're using your belly mower, it's not that big of a deal. You can kind of bury that needle right on there you're going to be okay but if i'm using a tiller and i'm going along you know like out on our property it's going to start to bog down at some point you're going to see typically on a digital gauge where it's going to tell you you're down to 500 rpms or 510 rpms or 520 whatever it is and number one you should use that as a cue to slow down you're going too fast but number two that's why i like to sometimes push it that throttle just a little bit above what it's supposed to be at because it's gonna compensate once that implement is engaged and having some resistance placed on it. Now, a few other times when you wanna typically run at wide open throttle will be, of course, if you are in kind of in transport mode, just moving from point A to point B, you wanna be in your highest range so you can move as fast as you possibly can and full throttle will let you get there as fast as possible. The only downside is that typically in the high range and at full throttle, if you are going up a hill, you're not gonna have very much low end torque and so I have been guilty of stalling out my tractor on really big hills because you just don't have the oomph that you need to get up there. So that mode is really good on a flat, no load type of situation where you just wanna get where you gotta go as fast as possible. Another common application when you wanna have that throttle all the way up is when you need as much power as possible. And not just on the rear PTO or the mid PTO, but on your front end loader. If you have a really heavy load that you have to get lifted up, you're gonna get the most hydraulic power out of your system with that engine cranked all the way up because the engine is what drives drives everything else on your tractor, including the hydraulic pumps. So the faster everything is operating, the more flow that you have and the more power. All right, so now there are some very specific applications when it pays to have that throttle cranked down low Maybe not to idle, but we're gonna say anything less than that wide open throttle. There could be different settings. Always play around with those settings. Just see what works for you. Oftentimes, if I'm doing loader work, let's say I have a big pile of dirt or mulch or something else, I could find myself constantly playing with the hydraulic control. Maybe as I move from point A to point B, I'm at full throttle, but then when I get to a load, I may crank it down a little bit to have more fine-tuned control over my loader joystick. And so that's really one of the most common applications is when you're gonna be using your hydraulic system, typically on the front end loader, it could be on the backhoe as well, but sometimes these tractors come with a very quick hydraulic system, all right? Uh, the John Deere 3E series, for example, is lightning fast on its response time with the loader controls. It's almost too fast, which seems counterintuitive, but I oftentimes will lower that throttle control down just to give myself some more control over what I can do with a bucket if I wanna kinda just gradually spill some material out or if I wanna make sure I'm getting very level as I'm driving into a pile. Now the same thing can be said on a backhoe is that if you wanna move left to right as you're dumping and scooping piles, moving back and forth, you can feel real jerky on there. It feels unnatural and annoying. So the flip side, of course, is if you are lowering your engine throttle, you're not gonna have as much digging power with your backhoe. Now for a lot of applications, you don't necessarily need to max out your backhoe or your loader and get every last ounce of power out of it. It's more about being able to use that power efficiently and effectively and not make a big old mess. A couple other applications when you may wanna run a little bit less than full throttle. Of course, when you're warming it up and cooling it down, pull that throttle lever down maybe halfway, maybe just a little bit above idle if you want to. 
check your manual, see what it has to say. We learned a new application this summer ourselves when our 4720 was overheating in the hot summer sun. We ended up actually turning our tractor off as it was overheating. And when we posted that video, we had a lot of really good comments there that said, hey, don't turn your tractor off, keep it on, lower that throttle down so it's not generating a ton of heat. But if you lower that throttle down, the cooling system will keep working and help that extra heat dissipate, gonna lower your overall engine temperature and help your tractor recover quicker. And of course, these tractors are very efficient. So if you find yourself getting your jobs done too quickly, just slow it down, all right? Just slow it down, lower that engine throttle, take a little longer, watch that sunset, enjoy your tractor time. Now there, of course, are gonna be a lot of times when the engine RPMs don't really matter a whole lot, and what I have found using tractors myself is that typically in applications like grading out your driveway with a landscape rake, with a land plane, something that's not putting a heavy load on the tractor, you can just kinda set it in cruise, Go up mid RPM level, do what you want just to get the speed you wanna go. There's not gonna be a lot of strain in the machine or on the engine, so it's easy to get your job done. Same thing can be said if you're just pulling along a wagon or a trailer, typically not a whole lot of strain being placed on the tractor if you're on flat ground, you know? Now it can also depend what kind of ground you're on, if you're in the mud, if you're in snow and ice and you have the engine cranked up too high, it could mean that your tires are just sitting there slipping and sliding around and maybe lowering that engine RPM a little bit could lead to your advantage. Of course, that could also tie into the type of tire that you have on your tractor, which is a whole other story that we've talked about before. But hopefully this points you in the right direction, gives you some insight as you're sitting on your tractor, getting to use it, getting to know what it's all about. Use that lever, that throttle lever. You can work it to your advantage and make a big difference in how you interact with your tractor. So I do hope you enjoyed today's video. And again, if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd encourage you hit that subscribe button right down below. We'd love to have you join the party. And if you are looking for a tractor, tractor attachment for the front end loader for the three point hitch. We sell and ship all over the country. We'd love to earn your business. Check out goodworkstractors.com. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.